Hi, this is Sandy Carter of Unstoppable Domains, the platform that lets you own your name, universal wallet address, login for Web3, and more of your data all in one place. I'm here on Edge of NFT, the unstoppable podcast that gives you a tour of all the hottest domains on the cutting edge. Keep listening. Hey there, NFT Curious listeners. Stay tuned for today's episode and find out how Unstoppable Domains is building the foundation of digital identity for the Web3 future. Why a high school prom dress inspired today's guest's first successful chicken egg venture. And stay tuned for today's community shout out to a woman who was the first to ever ring the NASDAQ bell in the metaverse. All this and more on today's episode. And don't forget, we put together a little soiree called NFTLA just a few months back that brought out thousands of the world's most innovative doers in the NFT space. Head to nftla.live to snag tickets to our bigger, bolder, better, but also just as intimate and impactful event happening in Los Angeles, March 20th to the 23rd, 2023. See you there. Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's episode features Sandy Carter, Senior Vice President and Channel Chief at Unstoppable Domains. In her role at Unstoppable, Sandy is responsible for driving new partnerships and integrations for Web3, Metaverse, Blockchain, and NFTs. Her mission is to onboard the world into the decentralized web by building a digital identity platform. Sandy is the chairman of the board of Girls in Tech and an adjunct professor at Carnegie Mellon University, Silicon Valley. She is also the author of Extreme Innovation and The New Language of Business, an international bestseller and the founder of Unstoppable Women in Web3. Sandy is a top 100 chief tech leader, top 14 edge leader, federal 100 award winner, member of Fortune Most Powerful Women, CNN, top 10 most powerful women in technology, Forbes top digital influencer, top 100 inspirational women of Web3, and a long and distinguished list of other awards and recognition. Unstoppable Domains is on a mission to return the power of the internet to the people. To accomplish this, they are creating NFT domains that put you back in control of your data. These aren't just traditional domains. These are domains with superpowers. Your unstoppable domain is your cryptocurrency address, your login to the decentralized web, and your universal username. Pay once, and it's yours forever. Sandy, welcome to Edge of NFT. Wow, it's a privilege to have you here. Wow, it's my honor, and uh, thank you for that amazing introduction. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I was blushing. I was, yeah, for sure. <laughs> we trust me. We could have gone on and on and on. The, the accolades are, you know, endless, amazing stuff. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm I'm super psyched. Well, we always like to start, Sandy, by going back to the beginning, and it would be great if you could sort of give us a, a sense for our listeners who aren't familiar, what's going on with Unstoppable Domains from a historical origin point of view, and how did you connect with the team? Well, so I was working at uh, Amazon Web Services and having a great time, by the way. Amazon AWS is just a phenomenal company to work for. You learn so much. Just great leadership, I have to say. And uh, they had asked me to take a look at some of our customers and partners in different technology areas. And of course, IoT, virtual reality, augmented reality, and blockchain. So that's really where I first started going down the rabbit hole was to sort through those technologies. And it was so fascinating to me to see blockchain being used in manufacturing and supply chain and Web3. And so that got me really fascinated with the space. I got a wallet put some money in it. I got rugged, made me upset. You know, the whole, the whole initiation that you go through being in web three, 
And uh, I just was fascinated with the next generation of the internet and what it would become and realized all the tech I was looking at and using at Amazon, AR, VR, IoT, blockchain were all of the elements that was really needed to create the next version of the internet and the metaverse. And so one day I got a call from Matt, who's our CEO. And he said, I'm coming to Seattle, want to have dinner with you. And uh, that's how I really entered into Unstoppable. That's cool. And I'm sure there was like for you, this opportunity to like play in a sandbox of converging technologies had to do with it because you were doing that already at Amazon, looking at integrations between all the sort of advanced technologies that are coming aboard. And I get the sense you saw this as sort of an extension of that playground. Yeah. And, you know, um, I love being in early on new tech and how it can impact everyday people and other companies. And so, you know, as I was looking at the power of what was going on, I wanted to be part of it and not as a side project, but as kind of like the main thing. And that's really what brought me over to, uh, to unstoppable. Yeah. It's cool stuff. I mean, it clearly, uh, you're ambitious, perceptive, you know, I love the rabbit hole theme that always keeps coming back in web three. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not just like a, like a, like a, a new technology. It's, it's definitely a rabbit hole, which is a cool part of it. I, I want to go down the, uh, the rabbit hole of unstoppable <laughs> domains a little bit deeper here. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the user experience. So if I'm a new customer of unstoppable, what should I expect? What are you um, aiming for, for uh, UX there? Yeah. So part of the reason why I chose Unstoppable Domains is I believe getting your digital identity for Web3 is really like your first step into the new world. Unstoppable Domains, you have a name and that name represents your crypto address. And for anybody who's gotten a crypto address, it's this long convoluted series of letters and numbers, really hard to remember. And so it's such a simple idea and concept that you just get sandy.blockchain or sandy.nft or, you know, josh.x. Um, it's really, it's really a, a great game changer. But I think what really, you know, brought me uh, into the fold was the fact that now you could use that domain as your digital identity. And that digital identity you can use to log into a metaverse or a DeFi app or a game. Um, And then you own the data. So that's really, Ethan, for me, you know, you own the data. You know, today I log into um, Instagram or Twitter and I can't take that influence with me. It stays with the application. So for the convenience of using their app, they keep all my data. And what I love here about Unstoppable Domains and our digital identity is now you have ownership. You get to decide who sees what data, when they get to see it, how much they get to see it. And for me, that is um, a very powerful concept. Yeah, high level overlap with a previous guest and, and collaborator of ours, uh, Brittany Kaiser. She had to own your data foundation. Um, and that's a big theme of, of what she's into. You know, it, it's really not just about privacy, right? It's about just choosing, right? Here's what I'd like to be private. Here's what I'd like to be anonymized, right? Here's what I'd like to be public, but yeah. I want to have control. And uh, man, a lot of people are, are sort of demanding that at this stage in the game. Life is kind of empty with knowing that your data is just out there swimming around for anybody to, to pilfer through, you know? Yeah. I, I was uh, traveling with my husband in a car and we're going to this, uh, to a party here in San Diego and it's kind of a costume party. Everybody's going to dress up like they're from Texas. Cause we were from Texas. And so we were talking about, you know, Stetsons and cowboy boots and we get home and everything on Facebook was fringe and cowboy boots. And I know they say they're not listening, but they are. And so, you know, maybe I'm okay with sharing that data, but maybe I'm not. And that should be my decision. It shouldn't be someone else's decision. We've all had our moments. Oh man, <laughs> I've had so many conversations. Yeah, well, it's the ones. It's the ones where people say, "I was just, we were just talking about that, right?" Yeah. And I got it. Yeah. And I got an what's, ad what's, for it. What's What's fascinating is like I don't know what my settings are, but I tell my girlfriend things I want to buy, and it shows up on her Facebook. But when she tells me things that she wants to buy, it doesn't come on my Facebook. So. Who knows? Oh, man. <laughs> well, Sandy, do, do you have any uh, any domains you could share of your own that you're super proud of uh, in the Unstoppable Domain you know, universe? 
Well, I do own a domain called Pink Mamba. And Pink Mamba is the name that I, I love pink. I usually wear pink, actually. I, I'm wearing teal today, but typically I wear pink. Um, and I, I captured that name because I went into the metaverse and I was doing a lecture. And I did one that was for business folks. So I used Sandy.nft. And then I went and I did one for my Carnegie Mellon students. And they're like, oh, you shouldn't just use your name. Like you're in the metaverse. You need something cool. And so we kind of brainstormed and we came up, we came up with Pink Mamba and it was there. It was available. So I snagged it. So I have both Pink Mamba as well as Sandy, uh, several variations of Sandy too. Oh, that's fun. That's yeah, cool. You're talking to our res, uh, resident uh, domain name fanatic in Jeff ah. over here. Yeah, he's the guy that's always picking up a domain every other day. <laughs> oh, guys, I, I got this. Oh, guys, I got this. <laughs> I have like literally over a thousand. And <laughs> it's crazy. Can I, yeah, you it's like a thousand. It, yeah, over a thousand. It's crazy. It's just, it's, you know, it's like any kind of collection that you get like obsessed with, you know, shoes or hats or whatever, you know? I'll, so I'll tell this story and like in, in an anonymized way, we were, we were literally driving in a taxi cab in uh, New York city, I believe, and talking about a domain that we should get. And, and somebody was checking, is it available? Oh, cool. Like it's available. Okay. Make sure let's snag that one. Right. And uh, you know, a lot was going on. We were heading to some some talks or something like that at a convention. And a couple minutes later, we try to get the domain and it's taken. And we're all like, it was the taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> that guy stole our domain. <laughs> Maybe yeah. he did. That would, I, that would be, a, if he, if he did, he that did. would be a great story, man. <laughs> I think he did. I mean, it was literally bought that day at that time. You could see the record, you know, so. Definitely but, Seinfeld uh, <laughs> episode worthy. Yeah, yeah so. de definitely. <laughs> we ended up in better shape ultimately. But um, in any case, I want to, I want to, you know, talk a little bit more, you know, about digital identity and, and what it means. And, you know, we're talking about, you know, domains and, and that really being the, your, your initial kind of portal into the metaverse, into the world of web three. Let's just talk about that in general, though, like identity in general, individual identity. It seems that so much of what we experience in real life right now will uh, have some digital form very soon. If it doesn't already, how does that influence how you think about what, influence Unstoppable can have on that particular aspect of our lives? Well, you know, as I look into the future, and, and this is one of the main reasons I came to Unstoppable, I think that a digital identity has such power and power of disruption, but also power for good. So I'll give you a couple of examples. I was at NFT New York. I hope I can say that NFT New York. Um, and we had a day with a group of startup folks, founders from healthcare. And they were showing me how they're putting on an NFT your healthcare data. Um, and I learned that 60% of people who are misdiagnosed are misdiagnosed because the doctor doesn't have all the information. And then I was thinking, you know, I recently moved out of Seattle from Amazon and getting, trying to get my healthcare records. I mean, I called some people up and they're like, we can't give it to you. I'm like, what do you mean? It's, it's my data. No, we have to give it to a hospital or a doctor, but it's my data, <laughs> but they wouldn't give it to me. So think about the power for good of having like all of your data, you know, maybe your blood pressure, you know, how you're doing with your cholesterol, your, I mean, just everything there that's part of that digital identity, right? Um, so Jeff, you might have jeff.nft or jeff.personal and you're gonna keep that with you. And that's data that you might share. Think about all the good that could come from that, having that data. And then of course you can protect it. Like Ethan was talking about, you don't have to share you know, your blood pressure with your boss or your colleagues. You can only share that with your doctor. Um, another great example is education. So we're working with a university to provide um, as part of your digital identity, where you graduated from, your diploma, your certifications, that sort of thing. Think about how powerful that is. So when you go apply for a new job, you don't have to call three people to verify it, it's on chain. So you know it's verified. Or my daughter um, just took a class in computer animation at a community college over the summer. Being a great mom, I went to get that transcript. I called the college up, because uh, they didn't respond to my email. And they said, oh yeah, we can get that for you. Fax us this information. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I had no idea where to find a fax machine. 
Um, So that was my first feat. I had to go find a fax. I had to fax the information. And then the school mailed me, didn't email me, mailed me a piece of paper that now I have to save until she goes to college to count that as credit. So again, just another value point of having something like that in your digital identity. And you can imagine so many things. And there there are probably even more applications I don't even know about today Um, that will be in part of that digital identity that you'll be able to take with you that will just make life so much easier, so much better. And then you get to choose who you share it with. Yeah, those are great examples of of sort of what's to come. Um, Another fun one that we just encountered and we're going to do a show with the CEO of DeLorean is that the new DeLorean coming out, they're going to do one more than the previous edition and they're going to have a digital twin of the NFT uh, with the physical car that has all your driving data on it and, and, and it stays with you, you own it. So I just thought that was super cool because we've heard about insurance companies that were trying to like take the data from your driving and affect your race, but they don't share that data with you. That's That goes to them. This yeah. is where you get to own yeah. your own data on your driving um, and all your preferences are on that car on your NFT. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I love that. And even, you know, like going to uh, events, like storing that you, you know, kind of proof of attendance for an event. I was recently working with a hunter who's the CEO of Relic Tickets. And he was telling me that 40% of people who say they went to the Super Bowl actually didn't go to the Super Bowl. They just say they went to the Super Bowl. But how do you prove that they went or didn't go? Like, there's really no way to prove it. Now, why would someone say I went to the Super Bowl but didn't go? I have no idea. But I just thought that was really interesting that you can now save awards, um, events that you've been to. I mean, there's so much great information that you can store that's really important that can really impact the world. So, you know, people often ask me, what's your favorite application for digital identity? And I always say, I don't know, it hasn't been invented yet. Like it's coming. Someone's going to invent something and it's going to be amazing, even more amazing than all the examples I've given you. Yeah, I I totally, totally love that. So um, on the same thread, let's kind of look ahead And what are some of the other things that you see heading into um, Web3 and the metaverse over the next few years? Let's let's be futurists for the moment. Yeah, well, you know, if you look at the metaverse right now, I think the metaverse has so much opportunity, again, for, for, you know, tech for good and to really change the way we perceive things. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples. You know, education is a big one. Um, I just got asked to speak at uh, Educause. And because of the way that the metaverse is disrupting education, right? So I'll go back to my daughter again. She was learning about Mars and the teacher was given lectures about Mars. He knows a lot about it. And then what a great teacher. He took them into Marsverse, which is a metaverse on Mars. And so everybody got to go to Mars. Oh my gosh, my daughter's energy and excitement and, uh, you know, discussion and description of what it would be like to be on Mars changed dramatically. Um, So just imagine that for the way we educate, it will become an experience versus a lecture. So I think that that's going to really change the face of education and the way that education is done. Um, You know, training, I have a a girlfriend, she's a a chief cardiologist at one of the hospitals, and she gives time for an organization called Heart for Me. And what they do is they go to Africa and other developing nations to teach um, how to do different heart surgeries. Well, over COVID, they couldn't go. So what they did is a group of doctors got together and they sponsored a training verse. And in that training verse now, they can train heart surgeons in all these remote countries how to do surgery. And they practice not on real people, obviously, but in the metaverse. And she was saying that the results, like COVID brought this amazing new tool because the results are actually better. Like doctors actually do, or surgeons do the surgery better because of that training. Um, And those are just some of the examples that I see, you know, a fun one, I have a a friend who um, was a a Vogue cover model and she always wanted to be a technologist. So uh, now that she's too old, she's 30 to be a model, she is developing virtual jewelry and clothes in the metaverse. And so um, what she did was she developed and designed these cool things. And then she offered me the ability to purchase it. 
So now I have this amazing pair of earrings that I purchased in the metaverse, but I was the only one who got to buy them in real life because I had them in the metaverse and I have a jacket. And I have to tell you, everywhere I go, you would think I was wearing, you know, Chanel or Louis Vuitton. Everybody wants my jacket because it's one of a kind. Um, and so I see, you know, retailers really changing the game, brands changing the game, education, healthcare, um, so many impacts again that, that the metaverse will be disruptive for. So many inspiring ideas there that you threw out there that are that are happening in real life. Like um, I just saw a, a, an article listing hundreds of examples of of adoption of NFTs by big brands that people may not even realize. Like Burger King is doing things with NFTs, and Ben and Jerry's, and you know the list goes on and on in terms of the the use cases. The one one of the ones you brought up, I'll just mention, was one of the original ideas that inspired uh, Jeff and I in a previous venture. We had a a hat company with interchangeable patches, and we always felt like there should be a digital twin, and you should be able to sort of tell us because we had to produce a certain minimum of patches, right? And you don't want to waste product, so like. You know, in a way, what you described is a way for fashion designers to have people vote on what they produce and to vote it in a more sustainable way. Yeah, a lot of cool, a lot of cool use cases. I I love the education one too, like the kind of hands on education. You know, I was doing uh, online training uh, actually in the piano industry for piano technicians for years, started back in, I guess, around 2015 to 2017 was when it got started. And it's it's exactly like you've said on kind of in a number of, of occasions here today, you don't know what the advantages are going to be and you're going to, you'll find out that they're going to be amazing. And I see with, when you do like these new technologies, you see like a couple of the basic advantages and that's why you get into it. Most people see the drawbacks because they're always comparing to, well, there's no real heart there, you know, and there's no blood spurting out. So it's not going to work or whatever <laughs> it is. Right. Yeah. Um, But then you get in that actual environment and you say, well, there's not that, but there's this, right? There's the chance to do over or there's the chance that, right, you you never know. And I love that kind of open-mindedness that you have about these, uh, these new domains, especially in education. Yeah. So, so on this theme of kind of what's next, uh, what's next in the pipeline for unstoppable domains? Oh my gosh. Well, we have a lot coming down the pike in terms of a utility. We just announced a new mobile app. So we've had a mobile app, but we really upgraded the mobile app that allows you to back up your data and information, obviously, because now your digital identity is getting a lot of good information in it. It's going to be really important that you can back that data up, that you don't you, you know lose all that information about yourself. Um, we also added into that a way that you could, you know, when you go to conferences, so let's talk about LA, uh, NFT LA coming up, right? Um, with that mobile app now, you can take an NFT. So you could take your lazy lion or your fame lady or whatever you have, and you can develop a QR code in the app. And so instead of giving out an old fashioned business card or just saying, well, this is my telegram, what's your telegram? Now you can just have your, your QR code on your phone and have people scan that, get your telegram, get your information, get your domain name. Maybe Jeff will have a thousand domain names that pop up there. Um, which I think is, you know, some nice utility as you're as we're getting back into uh, to the workforce. And we've got lots of other stuff coming out to um, that will just add more utility to domains and the power of how they will be used in the future. Can, but but I think, it, you know, you, you've given us a pretty broad overview of Unstoppable Domains, but you guys have also done some really cool collaborations uh, within this space. Can, can you maybe just mention one or two favorites? Oh, yeah. So um, one of my favorites is with blockchain. Um, so Lane is the chief business officer at blockchain. If you haven't talked to him, you probably should definitely talk to him. We just did a custom TLD or top level domain for blockchain. So now in addition to .nft or .x, you can get .blockchain. I don't know how many of those Jeff has. Um, And that was really a a powerful collaboration because it adds that community aspect into the mix, which is so powerful in Web3. Um, Lane said on one of our podcasts that they had over 200,000 people on the wait list. Uh, waiting to get that, which just got released yesterday for a free domain. If they were already a blockchain.com customer, 
And uh, he said that they acquired like 25% new customers from that new unique TLD, which I thought was really cool. Now I'm, my my head's cooking like like there could be like we could do a custom collab on a dot NFTLA uh, domain name or edge up, you know. There you go. That's right. And that's really a power of creating a community, right? I mean, one of the big differences that I saw coming over from Web 2 to Web 3, Josh, what's that community aspect, right? And you can see how a TLD could help you create that community, right? A community around dot blockchain or dot NFT or dot NFTLA or edge of NFT. Um, it really brings a lot of value and power with it too. Your identity is associated with your tribe or with your community. Yeah, completely. Um, another great partnership that we have yesterday, we did a Twitter space with the CEO of Polygon, Sandeep. Um, we had talked about Brian earlier. He works for Polygon. And um, I, I really admire what Polygon has done with level two, protecting the environment, you know, as we all move into web three. So we're based on that level two um, engine of theirs. And we had just reached 1 million minted domains on Polygon in less than nine months. So we were doing that celebration. And there's just tons of stuff that we're doing with Polygon. Uh, there are NFT creator shows that we do with them, education that we do with them. Um, and some really cool things that are coming up, but I can't tell you right now, but uh, they will be coming. So right. watch this space. Um, we also have great. How about now? Can you tell us now? <laughs> <laughs> now I can. How about now? <laughs> we also have great, uh, great partnerships with OpenSea. We've done, um, some great auctions and I don't know, Jeff, if you picked up any of these, but we did premium domain auctions with their own custom pictures. So like, um, Christmas.x with a Christmas NFT. Um, we did some for good. We partnered up with Girls in Tech and we did an auction. People donated one of one collections of NFTs and we had the largest fundraising day for Girls in Tech uh, in the history of Girls in Tech through selling those NFTs with OpenSea. We've done stuff with crypto.com. So just so many great things, I have to say. Yeah, here's what I have to say. I'm just noticing... Uh, what a subtle but excellent salesperson uh, Sandy is for domain names and how easy it is to sell domain names through FOMO, right? Hey, did you get that? You know, you have this. Did you get that, Jeff? You know, you could get this domain. <laughs> I could see Jeff and, just and like right after the show. He's like, oh yeah, I'm going to get that. No, I, I think he's doing it during the show. I keep seeing him look, look down. Oh, like, uh, I uh, I yeah, why wait? <laughs> I mean, you know, she was around Amazon. They got the they got the recommendation engine and the subscribe. The the that's gonna be the next thing is like get your get you know get your NFT domain each month from Unstoppable Domains. Buy a whole year of NFTs. <laughs> the possibilities hey, are endless. Good idea. I like that, right. Josh. Subscriptions, baby. Um, so I, I do have a, a question about that experience, though. Uh, we were talking about the different types of domains and um, you know being able to release like top level domains and so on. There are a couple of, of things I'm curious about in terms of like strategy. So you have certain domains that are not yet released, right? But within the within the uh, the the uh, you know selections that are are possible, and then you also have some that are are protected in there. Could you give us uh, an understanding of like what? the purpose of those categories are and how Unstoppable uses them both, um, you know, unreleased and protected? Yeah. So the protected ones, again, you know, we're part of Web3 and Web3 is about ownership, right? Ownership of your digital identity, ownership of your data. And so we felt like, you know, if you own your, your name, you own the trademark, you own the copyright, people shouldn't be able to go and buy it, even if they're early and then resell it to you. Uh, you know, one of my customers uh, was I uh, was McDonald's. They were one of the last to get on the bandwagon to do McDonald's.com. And they ended up paying multi-million dollars for McDonald's.com. And so um, we're, we don't do that. We protect your domain. So if you're a business out there and you're listening and you have your business name and you got a trademark or a copyright on it, we have protected that for you. And if you give us a call or reach out to our support line, we'll help you uh, secure that. We won't sell it to someone else. Even, you know, movie stars like Paris Hilton really owns her name. 
Uh, so Paris Hilton came and got her NFT. She switched her name over on Twitter to Paris Hilton NFT during NFT NYC. And so that was kind of, that was kind of cool, you know, as we were looking at that because we had protected it because, you know, someone could have tried to sell her Paris Hilton. So that's the protection. And then some that are unreleased, we're kind of looking at, you know, when is the right time to release certain things? So for example, uh, you know, we waited on gaming. Now gaming is really picking up in Web3. So we released gaming.x and some of those. So if you're interested in one that hasn't been released, and I'm sure Jeff, you've done this, um, you, can, you can say, contact me when you're gonna release it. So you'll get alerted about it and you have potential to buy that, you know, first out the gate as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Cause I'm sure for anybody that's gone down that rabbit hole, they may have some questions like that. I think that's super helpful for them to understand. So thanks for describing that. More broadly though, Sandy, we wanted to ask you about like, your inspirations in this space. Like where do you, you know, draw motivation, inspiration from people, ideas, other projects, like what gets you jazzed? Well, I'm really jazzed um, about community, the community aspect. So I, I really love a lot of projects who are doing a lot around community. BFF is one of those. It stands for Blockchain Friends Forever. It was started by Britt and Jamie, and I love it. It's, you know, it's on a personal level, an individual level, and I love the community aspect. Um, I just got asked to, to be on one of their committees to work with them. Um, we did a, uh, a ringing of the bell together. And so they've really done a great job of building an in real life community as well as a virtual community as well. I love uh, one of the communities that we built called Unstoppable Women of Web3. So one of the things you may or may not know, um, but only 8% of the builders and creators in the space are women. And my my interpretation is that's just way too low, right? We're building the next generation of the internet. It needs to have diversity in terms of the thoughts and the innovation. And so um, on March 8th on International Women's Day, I created this group um, to really get companies to support a movement of education, educating everybody about Web3. So I was hoping to get 20 companies to join us and we have 125. So we've got, you know, the blockchains, the open seas, all the who's who of Web3. But we also had, you know, Google jumped in. Google has a whole division now on Web3. Deloitte, Janet Fowdy, who's the CEO of uh, and chairman of the board for Deloitte, jumped in because she's got all these great blockchain practices that are growing and wants more women in the space. So there's just so much going on. And one of the reasons I found it is a lot of women said, I don't know what Web3 is, so give me education. So we've got these streams of education around Web3, blockchain, metaverse, creators, that sort of thing as well. So that's another thing I'm really excited about is to make this Web3 very inclusive, a very inclusive space. I was going to say, I mean, that's a great point. And I think um, in a previous podcast I had was a Run With It podcast, and we would have successful business owners come on and talk about uh, some business, new business ideas that they had. And, and for some reason, there was, there was a few business ideas around, um, you know, creating things in, in the personal finance space. But we also had some guests who had success with creating a business in the personal finance space. And, you know, we're talking about like web resources, for example, that just teach people how to budget and invest and, and all this stuff, right? And what I'd love to do just to piggyback on what you're saying is draw an analogy here in, in that, I quickly realized that there's always space for someone else in a place like that. Oh, there's already books on budgeting. Oh, there's already things about this or that. But people need to end. Anybody can enter when they have a unique voice and a unique audience to speak to. Right. So we need more and more uh, voices in the space that speak to these individual audiences as well, be it women or diverse, diverse populations that are underrepresented and things like that. There's always room for more education uh, for very explicit domains. And I just want to highlight that. Yeah, I completely agree. And um, I, you know, all the research, whether you're looking at McKinsey data or Deloitte data, um, all the research shows that you get better innovation, more innovation, the more uh, diversity you have. And that could be, you know, just diversity of thought, right? Um, at Amazon, once we were looking at teams and looking at which team innovated, because that's a really big thing at Amazon is innovation. And we found this one team. And if you looked at them, 
you would have said that team is so diverse. You know, there's women, there's men, they're different countries, different cultures, different races. That is a diverse team, but they weren't doing well. And we couldn't figure out why. And we finally dug into it and we found all of them had graduated from the same MBA program. And so they were taught with the same frameworks, the same ways to think. And so, you know, diversity of thought can be lots of different things. It could even just be that different frameworks that you use and the way that you think. So I'm a big supporter of this. And I do believe, you know, as we go into the next phase of Web3 to get mass adoption, we've got to have more inclusive ways of communicating, right? Like when you come in, you talked about going down the rabbit hole. Many people are like, what does that mean, right? Or, you know, a lot of the terminology we use is not inclusive and we need to make it more inclusive make the education more available, make it clearer, better user interfaces. There's so many things we need to do to, to get this to really take off. Well, uh, yet another reason, I think, uh, Sandy, that to have you uh, involved in NFTLA this year with some amazing uh, breakout tracks. That'll be a series of, um, of talks throughout the, uh, the event, including we have uh, an inclusivity and inclusivity and uh, an inclusivity and diversity track. Sorry, I get a little tongue tied there. And also social impact track among eight, uh, seven other tracks, eight other tracks that are going to be happening. So uh, nice. yeah, really, really cool stuff that we're happy to, um, you know, to bring to our, uh, our attendees. Hey there, NFT space cadet. Let's zoom in on the globe from outer space today to Abbott Kinney Boulevard in Venice Beach, LA. Let me show you a cosmic tech beacon that shines out among the bustle of fashion, art and food there. It's a thriving software dev, data science, and design studio known as AE Studio, where scores of the sharpest minds have come together to help founders and execs create software and machine learning solutions that are not only profitable and increase our agency as humans, but that give us that warm, fuzzy feeling that elegant tech so wonderfully does. AE's breadth of talent allows them to build anything from instillvideo.com it's a health, fitness, and wellness app that makes your chakras tingle to award-winning brain-computer interface solutions that could quite literally bend our minds. Oh, and keep an eye out for Token Runners, their NFT white label marketplace, as well as our highly anticipated NFT drop, Boomer NFT. Now, for all you DGENs who strive to shed the cummerbund and pearls comes a jaw-dropping, awe-inspiring partnership not seen since the heyday of Shaq and Kobe, it's called Edge of AE Studio, and you can find out all about it at edgeofae.com. That's right, this full service, soup to nuts, end to end, whole enchilada NFT service can help you, yes, you, Randy, launch your NFT project. Edge of NFT and AE Studio have come together like Voltron to get your project in gear so you can hightail it straight to the moon, stardom, and maybe even your own private yacht. Go to edgeofae.com to find out more. That's edgeofae.com. Actual results may vary depending on moon landing location, domain of stardom, scale and model of yacht, as well as weather scale model of yacht or actual yacht. So we appreciate all the background on Unstoppable and your involvement with them and everything we've been talking about. But we want to shift gears a little bit and uh, get your personal perspective on some questions. It's a section we call Edge Quick Hitters and it's 10 questions. We're looking for short single word or multi-word responses, but we'll dive a little bit deeper here or there. You ready to get after these? Let's do it. All right, Sandy, question one. What is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Let's see, a piece of candy. Do you have a particular <laughs> type of candy that uh, is your go-to? I love Kit Kat. So yes, it was a Kit Kat. <laughs> yep, nice. I, re I still remember because I... Um, I did something for my parents and they gave me money and they took me to the store and I got to buy my own Kit Kat. Super cool. Nice. I feel like, do you remember there was like a meme at some point where a baseball player uh, had, he was eating a Kit Kat, but he took a bite out of the whole thing. He didn't like break off the piece <laughs> of the Kit Kat. And then like, I think it was like Giancarlo Stan. And he's like, Giancarlo Stan is a monster. And he, this is how he eats his Kit Kats or something like that. So, uh, that's fun. Uh, all right. Question number two. What is the first thing you remember ever selling in your life? Ever selling. You guys are going to laugh. Chicken eggs. Okay. We need the background <laughs> on this. Nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, um, I did not grow up um, having a lot of money and I wanted a prom dress. 
and um, it was too expensive. And so my parents were like, you need to earn some money for it, but it was a lot of money. So my best friend um, had a farm and he said, I know a great way for you to earn money. You, you can sell chicken eggs. I'll give you some chickens and you can, <laughs> you can harvest the eggs and you can sell them. And sure enough, man, I made a lot of money. I bought my dress. I bought my shoes, my, my bag. And uh, what I didn't know though, was that um, I don't know if it was called homeowners in that, that day and time, but you know, that area, I guess you couldn't have chickens in that area. So luckily mm-hmm. I sold my chicken eggs, raised my chickens, and I got to give the chickens to a farm because I wasn't actually allowed to do it. So yeah, some of the first thing I sold was chicken eggs. All right. Very wholesome. Very, yeah, very, still shocked. <laughs> we're shocked. Very innovative. We, we there, there, there's just like, there's themes that happen on this show. We have couples, <laughs> but, but chickens has now come up a lot. We had Fox entertainment um, on the show recently <laughs> and, and they have this drop called Crepopolis, which is, you know, a, a, a series that's sort of written by the same writers, Rick and Morty with Dan Harmon. You should check it out. Apparently, guys, all those chicken eggs we min- or chickens we minted lay eggs. So now we have these eggs that are sort of building up. We um, can finally buy that prom dress that we were uh, there you go. hoping to get. Uh, yeah, you could have a prom at, <laughs> at NFT LA. There you go. Oh, the uh, NFT LA prom. I like that. Yeah, and, the and, LA prom. And, and Sandy, you could have a dot chicken, uh, <laughs> like ensemble domains address that actually does like lay some sort of extra mini domains or something yeah. over time. I like it. I like it, man. You guys are giving me all kinds of great business ideas today. This is innovation uh, happening in real time. I'm sorry. I just right. have to drag this one out just a slight bit more. I know we try to move through these, but where was this, Sandy? Were we talking like Nebraska or something? Where did you grow up again? <laughs> So I actually grew up in North Carolina. Okay. Gotcha. North Carolina. Yeah. 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 But it worked, man. I was in my, I had a red prom dress. I was looking great. It was a, it was awesome. And everybody asked me, how'd you, how'd you get that prom dress? It's all chicken eggs. <laughs> Love this story. still stunned. I can see it. He's like, I don't even know what to no, say. I'm wondering if you use that in your business school essays. That's what I was wondering, actually. <laughs> Well, I actually used it when I I went to uh, Harvard Business School and you have to uh, write these essays and they ask you for your first entrepreneurial experience. And that really was mine because I had to figure out where to sell the eggs, how to sell the eggs, how to price the eggs. Yeah. 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 I I, thought so. That's what I was thinking about. All right. Question number three. What is the most recent thing you purchased? The most recent thing I purchased. Oh, my goodness. Gosh, so much. Um, I just purchased a, um, a sleeping bag. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. You, you have a trip planned, a camping trip planned. We do. Yes. Okay. We're going to go, um, on a camping trip up in Utah and oh, I fun. didn't have a sleeping bag. I'm trying to remember it. Is it called a ramp? It's the sleeping bag hmm. actually that was invented in, um, San Francisco. Hmm. And it's, uh, it's really lightweight. It was on a shark tank actually. Oh, cool. I haven't heard of that, but uh, yeah. I'll look into it. All right. Question yeah. number four. What is the most recent thing you sold? Most recent thing I sold? Chick- no, nah, just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> what did I sell recently? I sold a pair of my uh, old Ray-Bans to my daughter. All right. My daughter loves Ray-Bans and, um, you know, I'm trying to, I try to teach my daughters about, you know, you don't just get everything in life, right? Uh, especially as you get out of school and you don't have parents there just to give you things. You have to buy it and you have to do a budget. And so she budgeted. She wanted a new pair of Ray-Bans. She didn't have enough money. So I offered to sell her an old pair of my Ray-Bans. There it is. Sparking that uh, the, 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 the entrepreneurial spirit and uh, some commerce there. I love it. Okay. Question number five. What is your most prized possession? Well, it can't be my daughters because they're not really yeah. possessions. That's right. Maybe my puppy. Um, I have a little dog. She's a multi-palm, so part Pomeranian. The bark really comes out from that. And a Maltese. And she is probably my most prized uh, possession. And what is her she's name? Six, she's only six pounds. Her name is Charlotte. So I have a Charlotte and an Austin. And uh, I name them after cities that I've been, I've lived in. So I've lived in so many different places. So I name my dogs after the cities I've lived. Okay. Question number six. If you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical service and experience that's currently for sale, what would it be? What do you have your eye on? 
I really want to buy a board ape. So that would probably be uh, one of my big new purchases. Yes. The return of the board ape. This is yeah. uh, there's a, if we yeah. had a chart, yeah, that would be, it would be up there for sure. Yeah. That's a, that's a highly sought after item for sure. Question number seven, if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would it be? Uh, my creativity. I love to come up with new ideas and think outside the box. That's really what gets me jazzed. So that's what I would pass on and hopefully have passed on to my daughters as well. Sounds like you have from what you've told us. Question number eight, if you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would that be? My impatience. I am so impatient. Like I want to do everything now and fast and sometimes too fast. So, you know, one of my uh, actually Andy Jassy from Amazon used to say, sometimes you have to go slow to go fast. And I always remember that to uh, kind of slow myself down and be more patient. Mm, yeah, I like that saying. Question number nine, a little easier. What did you do just before joining us on the podcast? I was on a Twitter space um, on <laughs> with my BFF uh, talking about uh, education for Web3. It's media day over there, huh? It's media day, yeah. Uh, oh, it's good. We got some Twitter spaces coming up. We should have you on one for, uh, we're doing some, a series yeah. for NFTLA. So, so we'll, yeah. we'll see if we can get you on one of those coming up. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Kicking off that first one tonight. All right. Last one. Question 10. What are you going to do next after the podcast? What am I going to do next? Um, I am going to go and get an icy. Ooh, that sounds nice. <laughs> mm. I'm probably going to door dash it. So the other day, do you guys know what an icy is? Yeah. I so do. my daughter, my daughters love ICs. They got me hooked on it. And today in San Diego, it's probably like 82. And the other day I had nothing in the house. And so I ordered a DoorDash and you know how DoorDash does, they try to upsell you. And so um, I finished my order and it says for a dollar, you can add a Coke Icy. Do you want one? I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, I want a Coke Icy. Anyway, they delivered, it was perfect. I thought it would be all melty and yucky, but it was awesome. And now I've had them now twice, two days in a row. And now I'm like craving it. So I, you guys made me want another Coke Icy. Did they have it in a, um, like in an insulated container or something, or is it just so cold? Yeah, or like, what do yeah. they do? It yeah. was really cool. They have like dried ice and they like open it and it, you know, like all the smoke comes out and then they they're like, here's your icy. And it's, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah it's like a whole it. experience. Yeah, yeah. It sounds good. I love it. Yeah. I'm in Florida, right? And it's like a hundred degrees out right now. So I think the icy could be in my, <laughs> in my future. Yeah, the icy is a great idea, right? Nice. Well, now you're in Texas, you're, you're in San Diego for now, um, which is definitely, we have, o we have the water right there. And um, I do have to say for many trips that the fishery is amazing as well. If, if you like seafood. So, so we're checking out. Yeah. I, I, I've really enjoyed my time. My favorite thing here so far is every night after work, we go for a walk on the beach and there are amazing sunsets in California. So the sun, that's what I look forward to every day after work. Not too shabby. All right. Well, that was question 10 and that's Edge Quick Hitters. Thanks so much for sharing with us. We do appreciate it. We wanted to move over to our next segment, uh, which is where we do a little shout out to fans, listeners, oh, yeah. team members. Uh, word on the street is Sandy. You might, uh, you might have somebody you want to give a little love to. We'll turn it over to you. Yeah. So I want to do, how do you guys do it? Do you guys like shout out like so, that? You, well, I mean, you can do it like that. Basically just kind of say <laughs> who it is and give a little bit of a bio description of them and why they, why we think they deserve some love. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would love to shout out uh, Kathy Hackle. Kathy is the godmother of the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And um, not only is she just wicked smart, she's been doing AR and VR for many, many years, including AWS when I was there. Um, but she's really gotten into understanding all of the elements that it takes to be successful as a brand inside of the metaverse. She's recently published a book. Um, and then she's now part of a company called Journey. And I actually got to accompany her. We went to the um, uh, NASDAQ stock exchange and we rang the bell on NASDAQ. But the really cool thing is we didn't just ring the bell in real life. We had our real life uh, persona there, but we also rang the bell in the metaverse. So it was the first time that that had ever been done. Um, and so Kathy brought us all together to partner uh, to get that done. So I was able to do that with Kathy. So I want to give her a really big shout out. 
Big shout outs to Kathy. Amazing. Very cool. And, and tell us just how to spell her name so people can find her. And uh, maybe I'll look up and see if there's a, she's got a Twitter or something like that. Oh yeah, she does. It's, it's a uh, H A C K L. Yeah. And, with and, a, and Kathy with a C, Kathy. it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Kathy with a C. Sorry. Yeah. Kathy with, I, yeah. I just assume you could spell Kathy Ethan. So I didn't. <laughs> well, there's a K, you know, there's a K option. Yeah. You got, yeah, yeah that's true. That's if true. If you get that's really true. crazy, you could go I E at the end. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So, see, yeah, we deal with right. that all the time. Now, Dan, did, did you, were you guys able to memorialize that moment of the ringing of the bell in the metaverse uh, with an NFT or something? Like, how is that recorded? How do we know? Yeah. I wish we had done it with an NFT, but we um, we got airtime like on Oprah. So I've got all these mm. like little clips, these little media. You guys would appreciate it. All these little media yeah. clips, right? Um, what's the crazy guy who uh, who always talk in stock? Um, oh yeah. Kramer? You know, You're talking about Kramer? Kramer, Kramer. Oh, Kramer, we were on yeah. Kramer. We were on Oprah. Uh, we were on Fox Business. We were everywhere. Nice, so we have nice. all these little, uh, yeah. My dad used to be a cameraman for CBS. So I told him we were going to be on and he like just set up all his recordings and got me little clips of all of it. So well, that yeah. moment needs to be yeah. on the uh, on the blockchain for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, it was really cool. Really, so really cool. Yeah, it looks like Kathy's on Twitter there with the, just just her first last name uh, at Kathy Hackle. Yeah. 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 Awesome. yeah. Follow her for sure. Get her book. Her book's available on Amazon. It's a really good read. Awesome. You guys would love to find her. So speaking of socials and Twitter, Sandy, we want to make sure that our listeners know where to go to follow yourself as well as all these amazing adventures that Unstoppable is, uh, is on. Um, where should we send them? Um, so my Twitter is Sandy underscore Carter. So that's how you can find me on Twitter. I am Sandy underscore Carter founder on Instagram. And then, of course, Unstoppable, we have um, at Unstoppable Web is our, our Twitter handle. And then as well, we have our website, unstoppabledomains.com. And then if you're interested in our women of Web3, it's unstoppablewow3.com. And we would love to see you on any of those uh, different platforms. Beautiful. Yeah, check them out, y'all. So many fun things happening over there. Also, keep an eye on our socials uh, because we're going to be doing a little giveaway. Uh, and so uh, we'll give you all the deets out there. So, again, keep an eye out. Uh, the Unstoppable teams are very uh, generous. And so we're going to be doing something really fun. Again, check us out. It's all at uh, Edge of NFT on socials. Okay, y'all. Well, I think we have reached the outer limit at the Edge of NFTs for today. So thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventures on this starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey journey all so much better. How? Go to Spotify or iTunes right now, rate us and say something awesome. Then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. Again, look us up on all major social platforms by typing edge of NFT with no spaces to start a fun conversation with us online. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great NFT content. Thanks again for sharing this time with us today. The views and opinions expressed on the Edge of NFT podcast reflect solely those views and opinions of the show creators and its guests. We're learning as we go, just like you. Please make sure to do your own research. Our podcast is not financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit all people. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk.